Welcome everybody. My name is Michael. Today we're discussing about personal finance. This is a very important topic for me since in 2018 after the cryptocurrency crash I messed up my finances and ever since then I've been trying to claw back up and in 2021 I've decided it is my mission to make sure that I have a good credit score by the end of this year since that was one of the first things that was impacted by my finances. In 2018 I tried delaying the inevitable but eventually I simply wasn't able to pay off my credit cards. What happened is I was getting paid in cryptocurrency. I got a little bit greedy and I told them I didn't want fiat currency from any company that was sponsoring me, from any company that I was working with. I wanted their tokens and unfortunately some companies' tokens didn't do so well. I ended up losing a lot of money and even when I had a chance to sell, I thought, oh, it would just go back up in the dip. I bought the dip, but that was it. It was over. Everything was going down. If you'd like to learn more about that, I'm going to have some links below. One of my most recent videos, Important Life Lessons, talks more about this. But about two months ago, I think I made a video discussing about my plan for raising my credit score. And I'm coming back to you now with a little bit of a smile on my face because starting next month, I think I might be above a 600 finally. Previously, looking at my Vantage score, it was either 511 or 512, and my FICO score possibly was even below 500. I think experience told me at 1.475 and since then it has raised a lot just looking at the vantage score which only about 10 percent of lenders really use if you're trying to get a car loan or a mortgage or all of this stuff you have to look at the fico score so the only way i'm going to truly know my credit score is by ordering all three reports from all three credit reporting agencies but i'm only able to do that once i'm back in the united states which is going to be next month however i wanted to update you because with what little i can do right now just looking through chase's journey through credit karma through all this stuff it is a good start obviously my fico score will probably be a little bit lower than my vantage score but i see that already the two plans of action that i put together are working because my, my credit score vantage score went up a lot in the first month it went up over 50 points and then it continued going all the way up to 586 and as recently as yesterday, it was 588 with one credit reporting agency and another 589. So let's just say 589 minus 511, that gives us a total of 78 points that we've gained within two months. And I've made positive payments to a loan and I made a positive payment to my secured credit card. So that means once that secured credit card payment gets reported, Right now, two payments from the loan have been reported from Self Lender and from Open Sky Secured credit card where I put $200 in. One payment has not been reported yet, but it's been paid off. I only had $1 out of a total $200 limit. So low utilization. Now the difference between 586 and it jumped up to 588, 589 is because something fell off of my report. This doesn't make that much of a difference, but every single time you do a hard inquiry, it's going to fall off within a matter of two years. And now I only have one more hard inquiry that's going to fall off in less than three months which is also going to boost my credit score probably by two to three points. Sometimes it's a little bit more. If you have a lower score, sometimes it's only one point, but it always goes up. And the more time that passes, if you're right at the end of the two years like me, it doesn't really make that much of a difference to your credit score. Now, you're probably asking, well, looking at the credit reporting agencies, there's three of them. There's TransUnion, there's Experion, and there's Equifax. And you might be asking yourself, well, why do I have to go through all three? It's because if you're trying to take out, let's say, a car loan, that deal dealership might take their credit score from somebody else than you're checking with. First of all, the Vantage score, it's most of the time going to be a little bit higher, but it's going to be different than the actual FICO score. And that's because there's various FICO scores. FICO is a company and Vantage scores are also from Vantage, a company. And both of these are trying to work with lenders and both of them have slightly different scoring models. Out of the five things that they look at, payment history, length of credit, types of credit, credit usage, and receipt inquiries, they are going to be reporting and they're going to make a bundle of whatever your score should be based off of all of those things. Now, what happens is with dealerships, they're going to look at your FICO and it might be a FICO 8, might be FICO 
FICO 9, might be FICO 6, might be whatever they choose. There's also an auto FICO score, I think, since 2017. That's going to be a little bit different because it's going to look at not only your scores and your credit utilization and your payment histories, but specifically if you've had auto loans. So for example, you might have somebody who keeps going to Toyota or it's a meme in the car sales community, uh, Dodge, you're going to get yourself a Dodge Journey. Well, Chrysler, Dodge, Fiat, they're going to look at your scores a little bit differently. It's kind of known that they're able to work with lower scores because they may not necessarily care if you've been behind on your credit card payments as long as you have been paying your auto loan payment before. If you've had an auto loan before, you might have a 500 or below, but you're going to get that auto score and you're going to get an auto loan for your second car. They're not going to care about that. Sure, it's going to be high percentages, but whereas other people might get rejected, you're going to be A-OK. <laughs> Some companies really like just looking if you're able to pay off your car loan. They don't care about your mortgage. They don't care about anything else. You can be a credit criminal, but as long as you pay your auto score, you're fine. So my main goal right now is I'll need a car for getting to work. And I'm going to be coming around May 19th. So May 20th and beyond, I'm going to be looking at a car and it's going to be nice to find something that's a few thousand dollars. I had $5,000 saved up for that. But if I can put that into a down payment, if my credit score can go up enough where I'm able to use a credit union, it's possible that I might want to take that route because they're not going to give me as bad rates as a dealer would. So obviously 29% is going to kill you, right? There's credit, uh, I think it's usurp laws that or usury that doesn't allow people to go up past 30% because there have been some crazy companies that have been sued over the years that have offered even up to 300% where you're paying like $60,000 for a $10,000 loan. But I have seen reports of people with a 600, 620 score. It's rare, it's difficult, but they're able to get a credit loan that is decent. It has great rates, four to five, six percent for some for a score of that level. That's amazing. You're not going to get that a deal or no way. You're probably going to get 20 percent. So I'm excited because 600 is next level. If you're above 600, that's fantastic. And I know for sure next month we're either going to be very, very close to that in the 590s or it's going to continue with the path. Although every single time I make another payment, it's not going to give me these crazy jumps of like 50 points every single month, right? It's probably going to plateau around 650, maybe high 600s because more time needs to pass by with my old credit cards not being paid off. There's three that have been charged off and there's one collection. So I might have to take care of that collection. We'll figure that out in the summertime. But ultimately, I'm able to wait till June to potentially get a car if I'm able to put a large enough down payment on that. Because the main problem is there's no public transportation near my house. <laughs> That's just not happening. People are going to be like, oh, yeah, just take the bus. Yeah, it's non-existent. And sure, the bank or the dealer or the credit union will make a few hundred dollars off of interest, potentially even thousands of dollars. I'm not aiming for any car that's over $20,000, that's for sure. I would really like something that's between ten dollars and $15,000. So if I put a down payment of a few thousand dollars on that, the loan would be around $10,000-ish. But getting out of the 500s is the first major step. And sure, getting a car loan would hurt at first, but as long as I'd be making all my payments on time, and as long as I continue making my payments to open Sky and to self lender, then I'm all good. My credit score by the end of the year might be getting close to 680, 690, and that's good territory. I can't wait for that. There is a secret plan that I might use to get my credit score above 700, but if I'm not able to do it this year, then it's for certain Then by next year, my credit score is going to be back in the 700s. I'm going to tell you more about that in the next video, or potentially the one after that. But I wanted to make this update for you guys, how easy it is to get started and rebuild your credit card. Credit score, not credit card. <laughs> Mine jumped up, my Vantage score jumped up 78 points. And I know that my normal FICO score definitely jumped up because I'm showing, hey, I have a new loan. I have a new secured credit card, card. And by the end of the year, my end goal is to hopefully get an unsecured credit card. But we're going to think about that six months or eight months from now. If we're able to get there and start building a relationship with both a credit union and a bank, then it's going to be a lot easier. And credit will be absolutely necessary if I want to get a mortgage in the future for renting or flipping a house or whatever I want to do with it. And most importantly, for reselling. I realized over the past few months while looking at all of these people use their credit cards on Nifty Gateway for NFTs that they've been able to flip for two, three, four X. In certain situations, it makes sense to take out 
credit card loans if you know that you're going to be able to flip something for example from a blue chip artist or even better with reselling if you're working with a company if you're buying from a company that allows refunds there's no risk to reselling let's say a playstation 5 but if you don't have the money for the playstation 5 you're not going to be able to double your profits obviously if you have a credit card and suddenly you have people who are buying five PS5s, reselling them for double the price, then you have more money. So that's what I'm really excited about. The, I'm still debating whether getting a car loan or not, but that wasn't really a possibility before. It's still not really a possibility right now. Of course, I can get a car. I just got an email that Carvana would give me up to a 90% guarantee that, yes, I'm probably going to get a car with my current credit score, but I don't want that. I don't want bad rates. I don't want subprime. And a lot of people are going to say, well, low 600 is not going to give you it. But there is an option with credit unions. Some credit unions do accept applications if you're in the low 600s and credit unions work differently than banks. So we're definitely going to make more videos about credit unions and all this stuff. But I've been learning a lot about personal finance. I want to get back to what I used to have, a 729 or 730 or whatever it was. And I'm excited to show you more of this journey. But it's fun how already I'm seeing positive results. Ultimately, I wish I have ten, fifteen thousand dollars laying around for a car so I could get to work. But since I don't, you know, I, I kind of have to deal with that. We'll see. We'll figure it out. Uh, one thing that's kind of pushing me off from purchasing a car for under five thousand dollars right now is a my money's in Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin goes up and I withdraw five thousand dollars, that car suddenly is going to cost me eight, nine thousand dollars if Bitcoin doubles in price or even ten thousand dollars, right? So that's going to hurt me. And that's happened way before. If I held the $10,000, if I held one Bitcoin last year, the one Bitcoin that I had from last year, it'd be worth like $54,000, $55,000 right now. So that hurts. And another thing, I bought a cheap car. My current car is worth probably $1,000 to $1,500. And let me tell you, it's not great. I have to repair more than 10 things, probably 15 to 20 things, five, six major things. Uh, it's not great, and the repairs at this point, if I went to an authorized service, are going to cost more than the car's worth by itself. Uh, so obviously I'm selling my car, but I don't want a cheap car anymore. I don't want something that's 1000 2000 3000 I've been looking at cars, and this is, by the way, in Poland, where obviously the cars are going to be cheaper, so you're not going to find a great car for 1500 bucks. Not saying that this car is great. It's a Ford Mondeo. You don't even have that model in the U.S., but it, oh my God, I've been looking at cars for two, three, four thousand dollars and most of them suck. Most of them have some serious problems. What's also unfortunate is in Illinois, they're a little bit more expensive than if you lived in, for example, Kentucky, Iowa, or Idaho, right? There are some decent models for four or five thousand dollars, so that's my debate. Like whether I should get something four or five thousand dollars or ten, fifteen thousand dollars, but hopefully if I get something that's five thousand dollars, it doesn't, you know, break. Any major thing, any major problem can cost me suddenly a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars that I might not have. Of course, any used car can break. Anything can be a lemon. So there's always risks, but I'm excited to share that with you guys. Hopefully you're excited for me as well. If you're rebuilding your credit score, let me know what you're doing. And I encourage you guys to check out FICO forums where there's a whole lot of great information on how to rebuild your credit score. There's plans for people to get from a 500 to 700 plus in less than two years. And so far, it's working for me. So have a great rest of your day, guys. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe, leave a like, comment, and we shall see you guys tomorrow. Bye.